shows no specifications for street shows, Mr. Mortensen. Oh, well, don't tell me our esteemed city attorney has dug up an ordinance against a little free entertainment. Well, Fat, you haven't given anything away for nothing in your entire career. Mr. Archer. Well, here's two tickets to tonight's performance. Down front on the aisle. First thing a man in public office learns is take a present, owe a favor. Now, Fats, just keep the noise down, huh? The most exciting act that's ever appeared in our fair city of Stockton. The lovely lady with the face of an angel and the voice of a nightingale. The sweetheart of the Sierras, Miss Liberty Keene, ladies and gentlemen. She's been called the songbird of Sacramento, the golden voice of the Golden State. And you will hear that lovely voice on our stage here this evening. Let's hear something now. Well, friend, we can't do a whole show here on the street, but if you'll be in our theater tonight, let's hear what she can do. Come on, come on, girlie. Give us a sample. Oh, well, now, look, friend, I just got through telling you that we can't... You're going to start singing a song, or do I start shooting? Those young fools. It's all right, folks. It's all right. It's all part of the act. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Ambrose, the man whose keen eye and steady hand has won him 53 medals from the crown heads of Europe. And if you think that was sharp shooting, just wait till you see his performance on our stage tonight. Take them in, deputy. There was no real harm done, Mr. Archer. Fats here was just drumming up business for his new show. I know what he was doing. And you heard what I said. I'm... Uh... And I have to run in for this, Fats. Justice will triumph, ladies and gentlemen. Never fear. The curtain at Morton's Theater will go up at 8 o'clock sharp tonight. Round up your songbird and let's go. Well, if you'd waited, I could have told you it was part of the act. They'll need a lawyer. Will you help them out? Well, Heath, I can't do that unless they ask me. Well, I'm asking you. call it entertainment. But the fact is, discharging firearms on a city street is in violation of Ordinance 116 and punishable by a fine of $300. $300? Archer, you know I can't spare that kind of money. Well, it seems to me I have enough money to hire a very expensive legal counsel. Oh, well, uh, Mr. Mortensen and I have a little agreement. Best seats in the house for opening night, right? Fred, it seems to me that under the circumstances, $300 is a bit excessive. Well, if your client prefers, perhaps he'd take the jail sentence of 30 days. Oh, come on now, Phil. We're only dealing with the Fats Mortensen gang, not Quantrell's Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> is that the latest in San Francisco sophistication? 
I mean, this is a little out of your current bailiwick. What is your interest here, Jared? Well, like any other citizen of Stockton, I think I'd be disappointed if the show didn't go on. Yeah, so would I. What happened out there today could have caused serious trouble. Oh, settle down, Phil. Anybody hurt? Any damage done? That's besides the point. There wasn't anything to boil over about. Well, what do you want me to do? Ignore the entire incident because Jared Barkley is involved? Well, now it seems to me that the punishment ought to fit the crime. Fred, why don't we have Mr. Mortensen do a show at the orphanage as a condition of his release? Agreed, Fats? Well, fine, fine. All right, it's settled then. Now clear him out of here. Mr. Barkley, thank you very much. The tickets will be at the box office. Liberty, my dear? Well, it's apparent to me, Sheriff, that you and I have to reach some kind of understanding about our respective duties. Now, don't go puffing up like a turkey gobbler, Phil. You're fresh in your job, and I've had mine for ten years. I can see I'm going to have to cure your buck fever just like I did Jared's when he first took over your job. How <laughs> well I remember. If you'd like to hear the sad story, I'll buy you a drink. To celebrate what? How the big-time San Francisco attorney got the best of a small-town lawyer? No, thank you. <laughs> Stage door. Oh, thank you, Mr. Morton. Oh, uh, you better get some food into him. All right. has health, wealth, and, uh, I hope, happiness. And a Liberty Keen, sweetheart of Strawberry and now of Stockton. Mm -hmm. You know, Heath, when I was a very little girl, Papa used to read me stories at night. And there was a book we both loved. It was about a, a poor ragamuffin boy who grew up to learn that he had great expectations. I'm very happy for you, Heath. I've often wondered how you've been making out, Libby. Well, now you know. I'm sorry you never made it to New York, Libby. <laughs> What's funny? Oh, life. When you were 16 years old, you begged me to run away and marry you. Remember? And, and Papa ran you off? <laughs> well, that wasn't funny. Not to me. Oh, nor to me. But Papa kept saying, just that far away, Libby. Just that far away from success. After Papa died, I went back to Strawberry to look for you. But it, uh, was too late. You'd already gone. I, I guess everything turns out for the best. Did it, Libby? Just think, if I had run off with you that summer, why, right now, you wouldn't be a dashing, eligible bachelor entertaining actresses with the champagne suppers. Well, I don't make a habit of it. The suppers or the proposals. I know that. Any other man would have arranged this whole supper just to show a girl what she, what she missed. Not you. You're kind and concerned. It's almost as if you still cared a little. You don't stop caring about people just because you're separated. Keith, if only we could turn time back. If we could just be the way we used to be. But I, I guess that isn't possible. 
But I, I had tonight, and I'll always be grateful for that. That sounds like you're saying goodbye. That's right. But why? Well, I'm not sure what time the saloons close here in Stockton, but when they do, the great Ambrose will come weaving his way back to the theater. And if I'm not there... And if you're not there, what? He'll either fall asleep in a drunken stupor or be waiting up for me in a wild, jealous rage. Well, does he have a right to be jealous? He's my husband. I needed somebody to, to look after me. Don't you see? Like, like Papa used to do. So I... I settled for Ambrose. Just like everything else in my life, it went wrong. I ended up taking care of him. I'll take you back now, Libby. You're, uh, angry with me, aren't you? Well, I guess you have every right to be. Keith, if what I did tonight seems, well, shameless to you, I'm sorry. It's just that living the way I do, you... You learn to snatch at a moment of happiness. I thought I could stop loving you, Heath. But I guess I never will. A touching reading, my dear. But then, you've made a specialty of these scenes, haven't you? No, he's drunk. Not that drunk, my dear. Just remember what I told you, I never kill. I never have to. I can place the bullet so that life isn't worth living. Goodbye, Heath. Libby, I can't let you. Oh, I'll be all right. After all, where else could he find such a willing target? My wife has a penchant for rich, young admirers. But strangely enough, she always comes back to me. Are you all right? 